Good afternoon. My name is Hugh Clark, and I'm going to begin by asking a question. What do these individuals have in common? What these individuals share is that they all produce oocytes. And this allows them to reproduce and allows their species to survive. And this is the focus of the research in my lab, how are oocytes produced, which is important and interesting to study, not only for these two reasons I've given you, but also because problems that, that can arise during the development of the oocyte may underlie some common birth defects. We also know that women are born with their lifetime supply of oocytes, which is limited, and so this is a relatively rare and valuable resource. A lot of work in the field has led to the development of culture systems that enable us to reproduce or recapitulate much of normal oocyte development in vitro. And so this makes it a really wonderful system to use to understand the mechanistic basis of this developmental process. And because we have this in vitro tool, oocytes are also a really useful model system to investigate other biological questions, such as the basis of cellular reprogramming or the effects of environmental toxins on cell behavior. So in my lab, we focus on three questions. The first is, how does the growing oocyte communicate with its external microenvironment? The oocyte lives inside a structure called a follicle. And we know that development of the oocyte depends on ongoing and continuous communication with the cells of the follicle that provide the appropriate signals and developmental cues. And so our interest is in understanding how the bridges that enable this intercellular communication are constructed and maintained. Secondly, we're interested in knowing how the oocyte manages key molecular transitions during its growth. For example, what we focus on are messenger RNAs. It's known that the oocyte makes tons of messenger RNAs, some of which are used right away to make proteins, others of which are stored away to be utilized later. And our interest is in understanding how the oocyte makes the decision whether to send a particular messenger RNA straight to the factory or to put it in the safe until later. Thirdly, we're trying to recapitulate normal oocyte development in vitro in order to improve the culture systems that are out there so that we can get a higher rate of development and get better quality oocytes at the end, not only to have a better experimental system, but also possibly for clinical or therapeutic application in the future. So how do we do our work? Well, we do a lot of microinjection, for example, of messenger RNAs into oocytes. And in order to obtain those messenger RNAs, we utilize techniques of genetics. After the microinjection, we culture the oocytes, either alone or in the follicles, as, as you see here. And then at the end of the experiment, we get to use sophisticated instruments like confocal microscopes to generate these really cool images. And at the end of the day, what we hope to achieve is an explanation of how normal oocyte development proceeds and how defects in that developmental process can arise. And then lastly, and perhaps most importantly, how these defects might be prevented or overcome to ensure fertility and healthy babies. Thank you. <laughs>